Hey everybody, welcome to Jerkin' It in the Tub. I'm Jerkin' It in the Tub, and uh, 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 this has been Jerkin' It in the Tub. Thanks for coming. I hope to see you next time when I'm Jerkin' It in the Tub. Uh, that's a new one. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't even filled my tub up yet. <laughs> I, I just, going through my notes, I realized I had actually taken the time to write that down. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It popped into my head one day. I think when I was like, I was uh, thinking of, you know, YouTubers. <laughs> While you were jerking it in the tub? While I was jerking it in the tub. <laughs> I probably was in the shower, though. <laughs> Except then I would have had to remember it and write it down, so maybe no. But, <laughs> but no, you guys might be surprised to find out this is not jerking it in the tub. This is basically sci-fi. My name's Todd. And I'm Jared. Hey, and welcome to Basically Sci-Fi, the short story yeah. writing show where we write two stories that you can basically call sci-fi. More or less. More or less. <laughs> Some other synonyms for basically. Yeah. Fundamentally. Essentially. <laughs> this is, uh... <laughs> this is bare bones, brass tacks, sci-fi. Yeah. And this Pretty week, much. we have, uh, as always, and you... It's in the title also, but we've got prompts that we've given each other... Uh, we both think up our own prompts and then exchange them at the same time so they don't influence each other, which may be more than usual is apparent in this episode. <laughs> yeah, these ones didn't... Nothing really clicked immediately when I heard yours on this one. Yeah. Can you remind me, what were they? Uh, I believe mine was Cryosleep and yours was Conqueror. Yeah. Cryosleep and Conquerors, um, I don't know, kind of a anti, what's the word I'm looking for? Antithetic. Kind of antithetic. Since, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the Conqueror, I assume, is gonna need to be conquering something and not sleeping. Yeah. You would think that's how it would go. <laughs> but I figured it out it was more just that when I first heard them I didn't have any initial thoughts on how to work them in together so I just went ahead assuming that I would turn one of them into a one line gag and be done with it <laughs> okay well this story which I don't know, I feel like you're not going to get the title. <laughs> Is it a uh, no-doubt lyric? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. You haven't done that for a long time. No, but... I will continue to ask. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if it ever happens again, it'll be a major spoiler, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be on the lookout for that if you see or hear a no doubt lyric or title uh no my story this time is called you have once again entered the world of sci-fi comedy survival horror <laughs> okay it's it's the thing that it's the little message that pops up every time you play a resident evil game uh never played one okay <laughs> No, nah, I figured. Anyway. Oh, wow. Well. The title amused me. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it seems amusing. Yeah. Anyway. So here we go. Everyone knows a rat scallion. They are a race commonly found throughout the universe of infinite possibilities. When their planet was on the brink of destruction, many refugees fled to the stars and made new homes for themselves on whatever planet they happened to land on. 
a few years ago, not long after the beginning of the space wall. Ar- <laughs> the what? <laughs> the space wall. Space wall? The space yeah, wall. Like space Trump built the space wall? That's, <laughs> that's when uh, Iggy, using his Mainer voice, said space war. Oh. Okay. It sounded more like wall. <laughs> Therefore, I assume space Trump is a thing in your world. No, um, the, the space Trump luckily only ever occurred in one dimension. <laughs> not this, not this one. Not this one's actually a much better, safer universe than the one where that happened. <laughs> <laughs> this one has more dicks too. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I mean. Fewer golden showers, though, presumably. <laughs> this one... Oh, my God. I, uh, I'll tell you a few episodes from now. <laughs> <laughs> did you put a golden shower into one of your stories? I did not, but... <laughs> I did not, but... I, I don't know. I had a really cool idea having to do with Russians. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Damn. No, it's 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 like actually cool, like sci-fi. So I don't know if you noticed, but my my characters who are of the race gray, yeah, s- speak with a Russian accent. So I decided, like, oh, they speak with that because they met some Russian Sputniks, and otherwise they were <laughs> originally. They originally had no contact with other races until they met Russians. I see why golden showers made you think of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm probably going to cut all that. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, all right. Maybe not. A few <laughs> years ago, not long after the beginning of the Space War... A Ratscallion intern was admitted to the newly founded Galactic Society of Friends. However, in order for the Ratscallions to be a former member of the society, they needed to get a new home planet. Thus, the sunless ice planet of Jurgle 9 was claimed for the Ratscallions. <laughs> That's important. Sorry, That's keep important. going. That's important. With funding from the Galactic Society and slave labor provided by Vin the Purple Pirate's Frost Giant Slaves, a giant heat lamp was constructed which thawed Jurgle 9 and provided heat and light for the new inhabitants. Disenfranchised rat scallions from around the universe began to flock to Jurgle 9. Rat scallion culture is hierarchical, divided into three classes referred to in their tongue as Nathies. <laughs> Big Nathies, Middle Nathies, and Little Nathies. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. No one except for you is going to uh, get that. Nope. 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 Kilm was not going to listen, so she won't ever have to get it. Probably not. <laughs> The big Nathies immediately assumed their previous position of power in society, but the middle and little Nathies, between whom there was little noticeable physical difference, squabbled often. Recently, two young rat scallions, born just before the destruction of their homeward to poor little Nathy parents, had arrived on Jurgle 9 and had quickly begun to make a name for themselves as alchemists. Word quickly spread about the younglings who, quote, were just the most irritating as fuck alchemists I ever met. <laughs> Surely, there were many irritating rat scallions, but not many of them who were alchemists. As Jurgle 9 lacked its own son, some of the big Nathies who had grown addicted to how swole they got off the yellow sun of other planets asked the young alchemists, Bros, could you alchemist us up some yellow sun substitute? You would be greatly rewarded. <laughs> to which the alchemist replied, Oh, I could totes do that, dog. Don't even trip. Uh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I just need some dank ass materials from deep in that dope cave y'all been hiding away from us little Nathies. <laughs> So it was that the young alchemists were granted access to the cavern, but only under the watchful eyes of two big Nathy princes, the Bara brothers, Chubaka and Capi. <laughs> if you listen to it one more time, you'll get it. No, I got it. Chupacabra and uh, Capybara. <laughs> yep. Anyway, you know, because one's uh, yeah. imaginary and the other <laughs> quite real. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was cute. So there's only technically one guard, right? No, there's that, two. That's what you're getting at. There's two. One is, They're brothers. One is They're... in their imagination. No. Well, you missed out on an opportunity. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, they can have an episode of their own sometime. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm positive. Anyway, where I grew up, that word means sprinkles. Like you put on ice cream, you know? Perdue said to the two big Nathy princes. Very interesting, young master, Chubaka commented, distracted. By the way, your brother doesn't seem to be doing too well. Are his eyes supposed to be all empty and glazed over like that? Oh, man, don't even, like, don't even worry about that guy. He's cool, he's good, chill out, my sprinkle. <laughs> Perdu was truly a little Nathy. Standing a mere four feet tall, he wore a long red coat that made him look even shorter and more stubby. <clears throat> well and truly hamster-sized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well... Cause I haven't gone into the size of the big Nathies, but... Oh, I mean, Capybara is a pretty solid size um, statement, as far as that goes. Yeah, I think so. You haven't really introduced him yet, Prince Cappy insisted. Well, my name is Perdu. It means lost in old rat speak. My parents named me that, hoping that when they left me at the mall, if anyone asked me my name, I'd say, I'm lost, and then they would immediately take me into Child Protective Services. It worked a couple times. <laughs> Cappy and Chubaka rolled their eyes. Yeah, but your brother. Do not even trip, dog. Not wanting to engage him further, the two princes stopped asking and instead silently made their way into the cave. The giant heat lamp above Jurgle 9 had not yet fully melted the ice within the sealed cave. It was slow going further into the depths as they were being careful not to slip on the ice. It really doesn't seem like there are any useful alchemical reagents down here, and we are nearing... Suddenly, a piercing scream echoed through the cavern. Perdu looked up innocently with beady rat eyes. Nearing what? His whiskers twitched with excitement. Cappy coughed. <clears throat> Nearing the bottom, and whatever the source of that scream was. Cappy's claw reached to his blaster holster just in case. Screams can't hurt you, silly. What are you, a scaredy rat? Cappy gnashed his teeth in rage. I am no rat, little Nathy. Perdue clutched his brother's arm and squealed, He's bullying me! <laughs> Perdue's brother stood about the same height as Perdue. He had a thick neck and a blank stare that seemed to say, Don't fuck with me because I don't know my own strength. Also, perhaps I shouldn't be left alone with farm animals for any length of time. <laughs> <laughs> His vacant stare fixed on Prince Cappy. Prince Chewbacca couldn't stand this charade any longer. I can't stand this charade any longer. I'm beginning to doubt if you even are alchemists. What is the reagent we are seeking down here in this cave? Perdue didn't hesitate to answer. 
It's like a glowing green rock, but actually more like a fungus. Also, it kind of looks like a big red button, but you know, like a big red button that if you squint your eyes really hard looks like a green rock. That kind of thing. You feel me? Yeah, I feel ya. <laughs> Chubaka grabbed his blaster and shot the two kids. <laughs> <laughs> Cappy was a bit shocked. The other princes won't be happy to find out the alchemist was a fraud. You know as well as I do that the Galactic Society of Friends intentionally relocated us to this sunless rock. They fear our true power. I crave that power same as you or any of the other princes, but we just can't follow any fool who promises us power. Speaking of following, Cappy interrupted, I was following you down here. Do you know how to get back to the surface? I was following the kid. Chubaka sighed. We'd better turn around right away and make sure we don't get any more lost. The two princes left the kids' bodies where they lie and made their way back towards the surface. Another scream pierced the darkness coming from the direction of the dead kids. Good thing we turned around when we did, Cappy said. That kid was so full of shit. I'm no scaredy rat. Let's think about this rationally for a moment, yeah? We are two big, brutal, rat-scallion princes. We've got blasters. We are definitely the most terrifying things down here, right? Chewbacca said, trying to convince himself more than anyone. Another scream could be heard, this time sounding much nearer. A cold wind wafted through the cave, carrying a whisper on the wind that seemed to say, An old rat-speak racial slur. <laughs> The hairs on the back of Chewbacca's... Chewbacca... Chewbacca's tail stood up. Oh, it was Chewbacca, not Chupacabra. Okay. It was Chewbacca-bara. Chewbacabra. Chew <laughs> the hairs on the back of Chewbacca's tail stood up. Uh, race you back to the entrance! Chewbacca lied as he began to sprint. <laughs> Cappy was startled as well, tripping and landing on his face as his brother got further ahead. Hey, wait for me! Chewbacca didn't wait. He abandoned his pride as a rat scallion prince and dropped to all fours to run faster. He scurried as fast as he could, but the cave seemed to stretch on forever. He could hear the sound of his brother's voice calling out to him, begging him to wait. Chewbacca briefly paused, promising himself to wait a reasonable amount of time for his brother to catch up. He perked his ears up and waited for his brother's voice to get closer. What are you doing? Wait for me, the voice echoed. Though Ratscallions could run much, much faster on all fours, it was considered shameful for a big Nathy to do so. His brother was likely more than a couple minutes behind if he didn't also lower himself. The panic passed, and Chewbacca began to think a bit more clearly. He spent a minute considering excuses for his embarrassing behavior. He decided to stick with the previous lie of racing to the entrance, and just being so excited about the race that he momentarily forgot himself. It would be just as embarrassing for Cappy to admit that his brother had lost his nerve so easily, and nearly abandoned their mission, so he was unlikely to tell the other princes anyway. Once again, Chewbacca could hear his brother's voice calling out to him, this time much nearer. Answer me, you scaredy rat, you big dumb scaredy- ah! Once more, there was a scream, and then a sound like gargling cum. <laughs> but more than likely, it wasn't cum. It was probably Prince Capybara gargling on his own blood. <laughs> Chewbacca hesitated. If dude really is gargling cum, I don't want to walk in on him. <laughs> While gargling cum isn't considered a taboo or shameful behavior for a rascalian prince to partake in... It is a very intimate moment, best not to be interrupted by one's brother. Yeah. Yeah. Chewbacca at least, at long last, decided that his brother was probably choking to death on his own blood, and that every moment spent debating with himself whether his brother was dying or fellating another rat man was becoming more and more embarrassing. So he ran on his hind legs back towards where, ellipses dot dot dot, his brother's mangled corpse lie.
Oh, shit. His entire throat and asshole had been ripped out, and blood was pooling around the body. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Hey, Cap, you okay? Answer me. The corpse didn't respond. Hey, hey, okay, so, hey. I'm pretty sure you're dead, bro. But just in case you're still alive and conscious enough to wonder why I'm not trying to rescue you, you gotta understand, you look pretty dead, so I'm gonna run, okay? Sorry. (laughs) With that weak-ass apology, Chewbacca ran off. The cave, however, was dark and winding. Chewbacca was getting winded from all the sprinting he had been doing, so he slowed to a walk and drew his blaster. No one told me there were killer monsters down here. This sucks. We were just supposed to make sure those kids didn't touch. Before him stood the tomb that he was about to foreshadow. The tomb. Another scream, this time very near. Chewbacca fired his blaster in the direction of the sound. I know you're there. Come out and face me. I'm not scared. The padded sound of shuffling feet echoed through the cave as the small figure approached. Ah, oh, gee, hey, you found the big red button! It was Perdu with his silent brother following closely behind. See how I said it looks kind of like a button, but also like glowing green fungus? Or a green rock, right? <laughs> Chewbacca didn't seem see any glowing green or red rocks or fungus anywhere, but he did <laughs> notice that the alchemist brother's mouth was dripping red with blood. I thought you two were... Did you kill my brother? No way, homie! I could never do a thing like that. (laughs) I found his body, his... His whole asshole was ripped out. As if on cue, another loud scream shook the cavern. Perdu slapped his brother on the back of the head. Cut that out, will you? (laughs) Is he making those screaming sounds? Yeah, his farts sound strangely similar to the sound of millions of voices suddenly crying out in terror and then being suddenly silenced. (laughs) (laughs) Chewbacca, terrified and slightly annoyed, pointed his blaster at the boys again. All of this is because of you. My brother is dead, and for what? Why did you want to come down here? I told your fellow big Nathy princes that I could find a source of great power down here equal to a yellow sun. They assumed it was a potion, but that's silly. Bunch of silly heads. You guys are greedy. Silly and greedy, yep, don't you think? (laughs) His brother didn't react. What am I talking about? Of course you don't think. Hold him down for me, will you? On command, Perdue's brother leapt at Chewbacca's mouth, frothing and teeth gnashing. The brother was only about half the size of the big Nathy prince. But he possessed a strength not belied by his small stature. His claws dug into the big Nathy's neck and his teeth chomped down on Chewbacca's ear. Chewbacca cried in pain and tried to pull his head away from the attacker, but as he did, he could feel the cartilage in his ear begin to tear. He held his breath and did his best not to move, lest his whole ear be ripped off. Warm blood trickled through his fur into his eyes. Perdue pulled a piece of black coal from his pocket and began drawing arcane symbols on the cavern floor. He also drew dicks. (laughs) Of course they did. Of course he did, (laughs) because it had been a while since I said the word dick. Oh, hey, Chewie, I'm going to need you to do something for me. Chewbacca lowered his pistol, now terrified, annoyed, and confused. What do you need? I just need you to smear some of your royal blood here in this circle on the floor. (laughs) You're insane. Perdue scrunched up his nose in disappointment. Come on, bro. What did I tell you about tripping? You are tripping so hard right now, dog. Uh, No problem, though. My brother has some of your blood on his mouth anyway. We can use that. 
Perdue's brother dismounted the terrified prince as Perdue handed him a toothbrush, and he began to brush some of the blood and bits of organs from his fangs. When he finished, he silently handed the brush back to Perdue. Oh, little mama, you are going to flip when you see this. It's going to be so dope. Perdue brushed some of the blood onto the symbols he had drawn. Then he began chanting and rubbing the seat of his pants. Oh, Maga Maga Maga. Oh, Maga Maga Maga. <laughs> Perdue's brother ripped another tiny scream. <laughs> Perdue sighed and said, Oh man, nothing happened. Lame. Oh well, I guess I'll just press that big reddish green mossy rock button. Chewbacca didn't try to stop the little Nathy. He knew what that button would do, but he was too annoyed to move, his body frozen from overwhelming apathy. <laughs> Perdue pushed the button, and a sudden gust of frosty racist wind swept through the cave. A feathered wing emerged from a tomb hidden in the shadows. The wing belonged to a giant rooster man, wearing metal pants but no shirt. His voice was deep and carried with it the weight and gravitas of a man you know wears big shoes. After a thousand years, you have awoken Cuck, the Conqueror. He who takes other people's planets and then conquers them right before their very eyes. The age of peace dies with my awakening. My cry will rouse the sun and bring a new dawn of war. Perdue did a little happy dance. Oh, my space god, a new dawn of war, so hype! <laughs> Tiny Ratman, you dance at the thought of our grim and dark future. Yeah, it's gonna be lit. Why have you awoken me now after a thousand years in cryo-death? Oh, man, like, you must have a lot of questions about this and that and whatever, but I can assure you, you are not even going to want to be tripping. <laughs> Very well. Lead the way, small one. Cuck glanced at Perdue's brother. Who is this? That's Dave. He's cool. Don't worry. Chewbacca watched as the trio made their way back to the cavern's entrance. Left to himself, he realized that he had forgotten to breathe. He took a deep breath and said to himself, This is real bad. I gotta tell the Galactic Society of Friends there's a new intergalactic threat on the block, one that is perhaps not as dangerous as E-Death, slightly more grounded in reality, but one that will surely test the limits of our delicate alliance. <laughs> the end. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That was good. That was good? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, trying to tell a story more than dick jokes. <laughs> you snuck a few in there. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, I, yeah, of course, I had a conqueror that was in cryosleep. Yeah. 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 It, uh, it seems reasonable. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the the story was about the journey to awaken him. No, it, it was nice seeing some different characters. Yeah. As far as that goes. But yeah. Yeah, it was solid uh, use of the prompts and <laughs> oh, well, thank you for that. Yeah. yeah, I was I was pretty happy with uh with Perdu. I haven't had anyone who was just like really annoying yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not intentionally, at least. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the only thing that comes to mind as far as being annoying is uh, e death. <laughs> No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> really likes that band. 
Nej. <laughs> I, I think I came up with the character that had no doubt first before I started just <laughs> referencing the band all the time. <laughs> yeah, I knew a guy that used to say no doubt, but like, not ironically. It was weird. That guy was a weird guy. Instead of just saying yes or sure? Yep. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I have a feeling that uh, Perdu would be the type of person to say no doubt. <laughs> Who knows, maybe he's E-Death in disguise. Maybe he is E-Death <laughs> in disguise. Or yeah, maybe I could... slipping out when he starts saying no doubt all the time. <laughs> He just, just isn't that good at disguises. Well, I'm glad that my universe is built enough where uh, foreshadowing kind of, like, is possible. Yeah. 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 So, maybe I'll do that if I do that. Yeah. Because now you got me thinking maybe he is. <laughs> 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 it's just... Uh... Superhero style, he just comes back to life whenever he dies because you need him. Well, maybe he <laughs> just doesn't doubt that he can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Even if he did get driven off the end of the universe or whatever the hell actually happened to him. <laughs> I can't remember at this point. Yeah, he got pushed off the edge of uh, the universe yeah. uh, outside of time and space. <laughs> Where uh, Space God kind of listened to his whim. <laughs> Got all naggy about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not really, he's not very often a hands-on Space God. <laughs> well, he's not real, so. <laughs> no. I've already established that. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in canon, he's not real. <laughs> <laughs> anyway how about you you got a story of cryo sleep and conquerors for me i sure do nice this one's called green lights and trash <laughs> okay <laughs> it's uh the mean the title is completely meaningless i'm fairly certain well i'm just <laughs> glad that it's there yeah I feel like you shouldn't shouldn't make a title too important. No, I mean, mine wasn't either. Nope, don't remember what yours was. <laughs> oh, it was a video game thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You just If it's not a No Doubt lyric, then you have no idea or no interest. Yep. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know they were no doubt lyrics until you told me. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, green light anyway. and trash. Look out for the next uh, solo, uh, the next big song from No Doubt. <laughs> yeah, we can hope. Yeah, I mean I'm holding on. Yeah. All right. So let's see. I suppose I should start this. All right. <laughs> As a brief recap, uh, mm. Ralph, Foxana, Linda, and Thel just snuck on into the green light district where they think Greg is living, and the giant robots have moved into the outskirts of the major cities on Hedroxia. Right. Where they are... Uh, they're taking in the sights while trying not to be in anyone's way. So they're just they're just tourists. Right. They look like invaders though. Yeah. Yeah, it it would appear that way. Right. I mean if I saw a giant robot show up. I mean, it'd be a little more surprising here, I suspect. <laughs> I'm not that familiar with the culture on Hydroxia, I guess. <clears throat> Oh, no, I mean here than in Japan. Oh. <laughs> that's that's kind of run-of-the-mill there, isn't it? 
<laughs> yeah, but we got Godzilla to fight him off, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, exactly. And the Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I already used a Power Rangers reference in my stories. Oh, yeah? Yeah, in the Isn't Giant Robots today? episode. Oh, no, oh. Where Vin and his crew... Oh, or, yeah, uh, yeah, they, uh, they form the Megazord or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ralph decided to lay out his basic plan for everyone. We should check the cafes. Greg always spent way too much time in them. He never quite understood the concept. <laughs> Not a thing. No. No. Foxana, you should lead the way. They're suspicious of strangers around these parts. Well, okay. But I'm only a quarter plant. I don't know how they will take to me. <laughs> Locals don't actually care much about anything outside of their own lives. But there were some basic prejudices when dealing with plant folk that were <laughs> held to be true by outsiders. <laughs> They set off looking for Greg and immediately noticed suspicious stares that came from everywhere. <clears throat> the first cafe had never seen him. And what kind of name was Greg anyways? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. It's a stupid name that no one should ever use. Yeah. For characters or children. Yeah. If or I had, listeners. If I had been thinking ahead, I'd have used... Your dad's name, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that would have been a lot of forethought for one throwaway joke. <laughs> Not fair. We can't use each other's names in stories. Yeah, fair enough. And the general type of standoffishness that made it clear <clears throat> that the locals all knew him, but would never admit it. So the crew decided they would instead go for the touristy approach. Instead of looking for an old friend, an inherently suspicious line, they were looking at everything and everyone. And if anyone asked why they were doing a tour of the local coffee shops, <laughs> it was a simple enough matter to make out like they were a special brand of hipster that goes to Paris to take pictures of dumpsters around the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> the tower itself gets all the attention. It's no longer a thing to be looked at. But the dumpsters are a distinct symbol of all humanity has achieved. You know, that kind. Hold on a sec. That doesn't sound like a bad project. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone's already done it. Well, just, <laughs> just in some case. Some dickhead threw all the pictures away because money isn't real. <laughs> Oh, man. Money is totally real. Yeah. I think it is. Therefore, it must be. That's how That's how reality works. You craft your own. <laughs> it took most of the day to find Greg, though he wasn't very well hidden. He stood out like a sore thumb on the lush green streets of the Green Light District. When they spotted him, he was casually strolling by, not at all looking like a man in hiding. Greg, what are you doing? Shouldn't you be hidden away somewhere? Ralph, it's good to see you. What do you mean? I'm perfectly safe. But the letter you sent seemed you were in distress. Oh, did you not get any of my follow-up letters? Where I, went <laughs> on to, <laughs> where I went on to explain in some detail... How Hobbleplux went from power mad to just plain mad. And while she is still the ruler of the planet, she's completely forgotten about me. And so long as nobody provokes her, she's actually quite a capable ruler. <laughs> well, no, I hadn't gotten any of those notes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty much my next line. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well... Okay, but do you think they'll start it nervously? Do you think she might find giant robots provoking? 
<laughs> there was a long pause where everyone considered the possible repercussions of their actions to this point. Finally, Greg came up with a new plan, but it was a bad one, so he shrugged it off. And Ralph came up. And Ralph came out with. <laughs> What if we just lie our way out of it? No? Well, shit. I mean, it's, it's a better plan than the other one. It, yeah, which he didn't even bother to say for some reason. That was a really <laughs> weird section of the story. <laughs> I feel like that was actually just your notes. <laughs> like, <laughs> Probably was initially. Like, no, I won't have I won't have him say that. That's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Shut up. I've got it. Well, yes, we will lie our way out of it. That's the only real choice here. But we're, <laughs> we're going to need to throw the butlers under the bus. Linda, no! <laughs> Linda is still the only one that's actually clever. First off, Greg and Ralph are recognizable, so you guys go back to the ship and inform the giant robots of the change of plans. The rest of us will go about the business of setting this unnecessarily elaborate scene. <laughs> <laughs> Greg and Ralph went back to the ship per orders and jettison the cryosleep tubes to land around the robots. As per standard ship operating procedures, they were all filled with animals and suggestively themed books, just in case of a crash landing on a remote planet where repopulation would be necessary. <laughs> the, the animals need that? Well, they need the animals for food, and they need the suggestively themed books for the actual repopulating. Oh, uh, okay. I thought they were repopulating with animals, but I'm like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that would be silly. That would be. <laughs> and then they dropped three empty ones near the capital to appear to have been used by Thel, Linda, and Foxana. And while this was going on, the other three were trying to make contact with hobble blocks. What if we just hang out near the robot? Someone is bound to get curious eventually, right? Fell always tried, but usually couldn't manage to make a good plan that wasn't involved with terraforming. No, the people of Hadroxia are quite self-centered. It could be months or years before anyone says anything. And then it'll just be someone looking to buy the land out from under them, or a tax man trying to collect back taxes for the time they spent there. Linda tried to be gentle, but just wished Thel would shut up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Of course. Sorry. What if we just ask that policeman over there? Foxana was wary of being crushed the way Thel always appears to be when Linda shoots down his ideas. Hey, that might actually work. While their police are incapable of solving any crimes, they usually like to be helpful lest they appear useless. And so they moved over to the police officer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, I, I guess it depends where you are, what you what you think of police officers. I mean, I can't remember now, but I'm pretty sure I set up something about the Hedroxian police in a previous story, and how they oh. aren't able to solve any crimes because it's a hive mind society, so everyone knows what crimes have been committed already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't remember that, but... Okay, now I can understand why they're just trying to look busy. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I should have reiterated that there, but oh well. That happens to me a lot, yeah. too. I remembered it when I was writing this story, so maybe if someone listens to episodes 11 and 12 back-to-back, -back, they'll, uh, they'll get it without a bunch of yeah. explanation. 
The people who are binging yeah. basically sci-fi. All those people. <laughs> oh, man. Good morning, officer. We just accidentally landed on your planet. Is there any way you can show us to your ruler so we can apologize and try to leave? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we don't believe in measurements here. Ah, of course. How about your queen, then? We're told her name is Hobbleblocks. Well, I don't know why you would want to talk to her, but she's in the middle of the city. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. You've been ever so helpful. Oh, yeah? Now, don't you forget it when the next boat comes around to eliminate the police force. <laughs> they said their thanks and headed out. They found the palace and entered and then proceeded to the front desk <laughs> of the yeah. palace <laughs> good morning oh. I, yeah I've never been to uh, a palace I, so I don't know I haven't Maybe either I desk. assumed that they don't have front desks which is why I gave this one a front <laughs> desk Linda was determined to try the polite method first, so she started with a cheerful good morning. What the fuck do you want? One of the <laughs> one of the butler bots turned around and waved a laser sword menacingly at them. He gave them an appraising look, thinking that he recognized them. But shit, all sentient life looks pretty much the same, so fuck him. No. Oh. Ow. Sick burn. Burn. We'd like to speak to Hobbleplox about our robots that accidentally landed on your planet. Alright, shut up already. I don't need your explanation. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so funny. I don't know. Yeah, I'd... Whereas... <laughs> Whereas my go-to joke is dicks, <laughs> yours is people telling each other to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's starting to hit me that it's very yeah, funny. Yeah, I definitely, I think of all the characters in these stories, that this is mercifully the last one of, <laughs> I think I enjoy the butler robots the most. Definitely. I don't need your explanations. Visit the Queenie. If it gets you to leave me the fuck alone, then all the better. There was a... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. There was a long pause where the bot determinedly stared at the desk, mumbling threats, hoping hoping they would just leave. <laughs> it's so hostile. <laughs> yep. Thel started to ask how to get to the queen, but Linda and Foxana grabbed him and ran off before he could further infuriate the bot. <laughs> the way to the throne room was pretty obvious anyways. It was straight down the main corridor, past the various torture chambers and saunas that made for an inviting but somewhat sinister mood about the palace. <laughs> Foxana found it all a bit odd. After years of living in a swamp with a possibly insane wizard, the culture shock of being not only in a city, but a palace as well, had made her lose focus. She attempted to look into one of the saunas, but when it turned out to be a steam room full of semi-nude people, she quickly backtracked and decided that civilization was not so different from the swamp after all except people had found a way to make a special room to be sweaty and damp in, rather than that being a part of regular, everyday life. <laughs> they continued down the hallway to the clearly marked throne room, and elected to heed the sign that said knock before entering under the punishment of laser sordery. The significantly <laughs> crueler punishment of a month of torture had been crossed out by the butlers who 
presumably couldn't be bothered to commit themselves to a full month's worth of, worth of actual work. <laughs> that is... That is one advantage so far <laughs> in their attitudes. Yeah. They knocked. They waited. They probably waited an unnecessary amount of time. Then they knocked again. They could hear muffled shouting from the other side. The shouting quickly became a raucous banter, followed by the unmistakable swish and whir of laser swords. And finally, the cocking of a gun. Oh. Then silence. Right. And shortly after, the door to the throne room swung open. The scene inside was about as you would expect. A bunch of butler bots huddled in the corner attempting to use each other as shields, while Hobbleplock sat on the throne, pointing her gun at them and cackling. Oh god. So what is the deal with them giant robots? Anyways... And your answer better be good, or I will be annoyed. And you won't like me when I'm annoyed. <laughs> Fell went to answer. But Linda obviously understood the plan better, so she interrupted him before he could even start. Well, you see, we are intergalactic travelers from the other side of the universe, traveling for hundreds of trillions of years. We brought our colony ship and defensive robots just in case <laughs> someone aggressive evolved while we were headed here. She went on with this for a while, detailing a long backstory that I'm running out of time to tell. Suffice it to say, she painted a very sympathetic case with undertones <laughs> of threatening robot descriptions. That kind when she of finished, Hobbleplox was sufficiently threatened but still supremely arrogant and shot back with threats of her own, including, but not limited to, beating them up, defenestration, history lectures, and a plague of shrimp. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'll take that last one, though. I mean, after a while, shrimp gets old. I don't... Old shrimp smells bad. Oh. <laughs> 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 also, I've never tried defenestration, but... The, uh... So, it involves, uh... I mean, I guess it depends on what story the window is on. <laughs> like, uh, first floor, you know, uh, that's not a big deal. I don't know, I was trying to make a joke about the all-you-can-eat shrimp at Red Lobster, but... <laughs> I don't know, it wasn't really coming out. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't remember where I learned the word defenestration. Like, was that like a vocab word in high school, or was that? Yeah, I mean, I think I learned it when I was learning about uh, European history. There was a I don't an yeah. event called the defenestration of Prague, which oh. I don't remember the exact details around, other than someone got thrown out of a window. Yeah. I just don't feel like I've ever seen it used organically. Like, I just, like, must have heard, like, no, heard the yeah, word well, someone I mean, going. It just yeah. means, like, the act of being thrown or throwing someone out of a window. So it's, yeah. there's not really much opportunity for for it to be used organically. Exactly. So it's just a fun I don't word. even know why I would Use know that it. word. Yeah, I mean, mostly because it's kind of a, or people remember it because it's kind of silly and yeah. pointless word to have. Yeah. So it's... Although now I wish I had named my character Cuck the Defenestrator. <laughs> but then you'd have to find somewhere else to use Conquer. Well... <laughs> yeah, it's a process, you know, he defenestrates and then he conquers. Or he conquers by defenestra defenestration. Exactly. Haha, <laughs> 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 I know your weakness, Cuck. I've installed no windows in this room. Shit. <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> Well, 
It seems like we have come to a standoff. Perhaps we should take this issue to your people. Foxana was feeling pretty uncomfortable and didn't need any of this, but she was back to normal now and didn't want to end up dead for the trouble. Oh my, that hadn't occurred to me. Hubbleplex was shaken by the idea that any choices would be put in the hands of the people. They were fucking stupid <laughs> after all. <laughs> all right then, I'm their leader. What's the worst that could happen? They all went outside. And since all political interactions are televised on Heteroxia, there was already a throng chanting Foxana's name. The choice had been made. Foxana was to become the new dictator for life, according to that mob. Or at least until we find someone better. That is the, the full title. Dictator for life or until we find someone better. I like that it's we, so it's like, it is a position, it's a dictator, but it's one that's been installed by yeah, the people, yeah, so. It's, it's essentially yeah. a democracy, but a democracy that only happens when people give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of forcing people to care once every several years. <laughs> yeah, if we could just kick them out and install a new one yeah. anytime. That'd be great. That would, that would totally work. <laughs> It's just every time a mob shows up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to go to Washington, D.C. and stand on the White House lawn and shout until the president leaves. Well, then, luckily, poor people won't be able to make the trip and rich people will not. <laughs> exactly, except Trump would have been president long ago if that's where how, that were how it was done. <laughs> you know, he would just stand there all the time shouting. Till whoever was the president just killed themselves out of frustration. <laughs> Someone else shows up and goes, Barry, just kill yourself or this, get this guy to shut up. <laughs> yeah. The, I uh, might have a drone strike with your name on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> The crowd started chanting, Hail the Conquering Heroes. The robots... <laughs> chanting? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the robots decided they were no longer want... Or they no longer wanted to hunt on this planet. And so they went home. And then Foxana made her first decree. They would exile Hobbleplex forever by placing her in cryosleep and blasting her into the infinite void. Oh. <laughs> Greg and Ralph returned to their homes to no fanfare. We both decided to leave shortly after to pursue their own endeavors. Fel and Linda went on to seek help for Dombey's emotional struggles. <laughs> and Foxana spent a year as the leader of Hadroxia before the butler robots drove her mad. And she fled back to the swamp to punish the wizard for what he had put her through. <laughs> <laughs> she did that by spreading rumors of him wearing a fake beard. Because we all know that's <gasps> hugely shameful. Especially for a space wizard. Especially. The butlers all left to try and find a pl primitive planet that they could mold in their own image. Because normal people were too polite and boring. <laughs> Next time, everything is new because I'm tired of these characters. <laughs> oh man. What about the 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 T Rex butler? But Oh yeah, I forgot about him. I didn't mention him the whole time because I kept expecting him to show up and like no, be I, the new uh, king. I forgot he existed. <laughs> no, <laughs> Oh, well, I guess I'll have to rewrite that story, and we can record it another time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's just blending in so well with all the other butler bots that yeah, he wasn't he's worth just, mentioning. he's just one of the guys now. He could have been that one at the front desk. <laughs> yeah, he could have been. 
It's hard to tell. Nobody knows. Robots all look <laughs> the same. Yep. No, I'll have to bring him back with a solo robots episode sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if I learned anything from this story, it's that all your other characters are gone and done with, but the robots are still there. <laughs> yep. I they was also have thinking gone about on a new adventure. At some point, I but... would do an episode with Foxana and the Space Wizard, but I'm just tired of these characters right now, so I've been doing oh, a few yeah. stories about other things. For now. For now. Yeah. I felt exactly the same way when I made uh, Perdue. Yeah. I was like, I need something that's happening concurrently to my plot but and maybe even develops it more but just, just not doesn't, involving doesn't anyone. Doesn't involve Arister and um whatever their names are. <laughs> Nova uh, is the one that's alive. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Iggy. Iggy 88. Iggy 88. Which is, sadly, probably my best joke still that doesn't have a dick in it. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta start telling people to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, what did you think of that story? I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It um it wrapped up. Uh, nicely, and I think that um, yeah, the uh, the giant robots w- are still amusing. Uh, I was a little bit surprised to find out that they were that they were just still legitimately hunting. Yeah, like they, uh, nobody yeah. talked to them. No, they were they were just on vacation. They were actually on vacation. Yeah, they actually were, <laughs> and. And the people uh, of then were when they... ignoring them because they were too large. <laughs> and, uh... Um... I liked, uh... I liked the interaction with Hobbleplox. Yeah, it was... I kept it brief, but... It was... I felt like I could have made it into two episodes again, but I just didn't want to, so I kind of rushed the ending there. No, it didn't feel rushed to me. It felt like they had the conversation that they needed to have, yeah. and, uh, you know, it uh, it worked logically and also was funny, so... Yeah, and I guess I just felt it was rushed because I had a another plan as far as how to help it end, but I didn't get there in time. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, yeah, I think that this episode turn, turned out nicely, and uh, I'm excited for the next episode, yeah. for which we have prompts. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, usually when I finish writing an episode, uh, I then just put a note at the bottom saying what my prompt for next time that's, is. Uh, that's not how I do it at all. I usually forget, and then you ask me for a prompt, and I make one up on the spot. (laughs) Well, that's probably fine. Yeah. I mean, I try not to... It's worked out so far. (laughs) I try not to let my prompt idea, like... I try not to just let my prompt idea be where I want to go with the story next. Yeah, I try to avoid having it interact with my story as much as possible. Yeah. (laughs) I try to just pick the first sci-fi sounding word that pops into my head. Yeah, like, in this case, I've been watching some Star Trek recently, yeah. so I went for morality. That is pretty because sci-fi. Star cause... Trek is just a morality tale, for the most part. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, some of them. I mean, the, the original series and Next Generation were... Oh, yeah. And then, apparently the first sci-fi sounding word that popped into my head was highbrow. Clearly. Yeah, that (laughs) uh, makes perfect sense. 
<laughs> but no, it's cool how morality actually does. <laughs> yeah. That actually yeah, is a, a very good prompt. Yeah, there's a lot of... There's some, a few different thought schools of thought on science fiction. There's the, the Star Wars kind of, like, make it a action movie with lasers instead of regular bullets because they look cooler. Right. And then there's the Star Trek kind of, like, teach people how to be a decent person because otherwise they're going to fuck up the future. <laughs> I think that the uh, the school of sci-fi thought that uh, most influences me is just the um, the like Cthulhu. Oh, there are like, giant monsters living under the sea that are going to end the world someday. Like everything is far too big for it to really matter. <laughs> oh, oh, that that side of the Cthulhu myths. So like okay. nihilism. <laughs> yeah. Good old HP Lovecraft. Yeah. Really that knew how is. to write a downer of a book. Yeah. <laughs> And honestly, that's what influences my, my comedy sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. Yup. You, uh, you're just gunning for a job at Blizzard, aren't you? <laughs> that is not a bad idea. I mean, pretty much all of their storylines are based around some sort of Lovecraftian horror. Or so Thor. All of the old gods are... <laughs> just directly like they just barely changed the names oh yeah Cthun instead of Cthulhu and the other ones yeah <laughs> I mean when you think of it like we were just talking the other day with our friend who really likes wow about how much we like the lore of yeah. World of Warcraft of Warcraft and yeah. then it's all just uh it's all just Lovecraft and the comic book Thor. <laughs> yeah, Lovecraft and then Norse mythology and, yeah. you know, a few other things here and there, but... Um, but, like, specifically Thor. Yeah. <laughs> comic book, Marvel Thor. Oh. Yeah. Huh. I mean, comic book Thor is basically just a caricature of the... Norse myth Thor, so. Well, yeah, but then, like, uh. Except Loki is a lot more strange in the North myth Norse mythology. Yeah. And also, he turns into a Thor, horse the gods at one are... point. <laughs> he turns into a horse. He turns into a horse and then gets pregnant. <laughs> in gives... the Norse mythology. In the Norse mythology, yeah. Uh, he gives birth to. Some creature. Ah. Yeah. I was no, just going to say specifically because they're all still alive and not uh -huh. dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Norse mythology is really funny and bizarre. Well, that's I love how they think that there were gods, but they're all dead now. <laughs> yep. But also they've got the whole story they're already. They're like... having a party up in Valhalla waiting for the end of the world. Yep. It's a, if there were ever religion to follow, it was it'd definitely be that one. It's the only Since one that makes any sense. Hey, why are there no gods here? <laughs> I mean, there had to have been gods to shape everything. Well, they're all already dead. They're uh, yeah, they're fucking dead. So shut that up. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Not just he's busy working in mysterious ways. Yeah. Oh, he's invisible. You can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't believe, then he's gonna he's be mad. Gonna shit down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then... Exile you, or whatever. Uh, I thought you were gonna go into a... Uh, 
Jay and Silent Bob strike back Grant there. <laughs> shit down your fucking throat. And then make you eat our shit. And then shit out our shit. And then make <laughs> you eat that shit which we made them eat. End, end quote. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Anyway, thank you guys for listening to me half remembering Jay and Silent Bob quotes. <laughs> yeah. This has been basically sci-fi. Tune in next time for more of that. <laughs> a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't know how the rest of that song goes. Some of column A. Try all of column B. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were thinking of different songs. <laughs> I'm in the mood to help you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> We were thinking of different songs, but yeah. now I've got that one in my head. <laughs> uh, good. Yep. Well, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye. Bye.